How Madison communities will soon be able to get rid of food scraps in a more eco-friendly way. And negotiations between lawmakers and the Biden administration continue over raising the nation's debt ceiling. The possible proposed cuts as a deadline looms. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. New at noon, Governor Tony Evers announced he and Republican lawmakers are working toward a bipartisan compromise on a bill that would increase local government funding. Evers did not detail what compromises may be reached, which would change how local governments are funded and increase the state aid for the first time in decades. It's a measure Democrats originally promised to veto because too many strings were attached. The governor says he expects negotiations to continue for weeks. Next week, people in Madison will have the chance to get rid of food scraps in an eco-friendly way. Starting next Tuesday, food scraps can be dropped off at the South Madison Farmer's Market on the corner of South Park Street and West Wingward Drive. Things like coffee grounds, eggshells, raw fruits and vegetables will be accepted from 2 to 6 p.m. every Tuesday until the end of October. For more information, look for this story on Chop3000.com. And just days after turning to the public for help, Dane County Humane Society announced they have surpassed its fundraising goal to help dozens of cats that were rescued from a hoarding situation. Fifty cats were taken from a Madison home and brought to the Humane Society last week. Humane Society originally asked for $7,500 to help with medical expenses, including spay and neuter surgeries and urgent medical needs, but they well surpassed that goal. Two cats have since been adopted, and several others are also available. For more information, go to channel3000.com. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Greg Barnard has a look at your first worn forecast. Had a Wear a sweatshirt this morning to walk the dogs. It was another cool morning. We got down to the low 40s, mid 40s. That smoke actually might have helped keep some temperatures a little bit uh, higher than what they would. But overall, radar indicates you just see in the far north, North Dakota, we have some rain starting to appear. That is a system eventually that will provide us some precipitation, but not until tomorrow. So overall, we're still looking at good conditions. They're not clouds out there still. That is just smoke that continues to filter down and kind of circulating back overhead. So we'll continue that through the day, but otherwise there'll be sunshine, but it'll be filtered through all that smoke. So the big picture shows that smoke kind of circulating around and there's a system up to the northwest, that front that's approaching uh, in actually into North Dakota. That is the one that we're tracking for later tomorrow evening and tomorrow night to bring the precipitation. But in the meantime, it's still well away. So with that northeast wind behind the cold front, we did have chill, chiller, chillier temperatures today, mid to upper 50s for Madison, but it's warmer further west in the 60s and much cooler as you go further towards the lake, towards Milwaukee, which is barely at 50 degrees right now. And there's your wind, about 5 to 10 miles per hour, a little bit stronger, 10 to 15 further east. So plan the day out. We're going to get up to the, about the middle 60s, a little bit cooler with that east wind. Sunshine, but still hazy conditions, so it should be a good sunset once again. Later in the broadcast, we'll track the rain that's associated with that system up to the north, as well as what the weekend looks like, and potentially much warmer conditions even next week right now. All right, we'll check back, Greg. Thank you. The White House and congressional leaders have appointed senior leaders to head up debt stealing negotiations on their behalf. Skylar Henry has the latest as a deadline looms. President Biden is leaving for Japan, even as negotiations over the debt ceiling continue. I've cut my trip short uh, in order to be for the final negotiations and sign the deal with, with uh, the majority leader. The president appointed three aides to lead the negotiations, including Shalanda Young, the head of his budget office. Young's appointment shows the White House isn't solely focused on raising the debt ceiling, but is also serious about working with House Republicans over budget cuts. So the structure of, of um, how we negotiate has improved. So it now gives you a better opportunity, even though we only have a few days to get it done. The Biden administration says it's willing to compromise on changes to domestic energy projects and clawing back about $30 billion in unspent COVID relief money. Republicans want to add stricter work requirements requirements for Medicaid and food stamp recipients. That is a non-starter for many of us on the Democratic caucus. We have to stick to our values. Congressional leaders say they also discussed raising the debt limit for several more years in order to avoid last-minute crises like this. House Republicans say they're open to that, but not without even more budget cuts. Anytime somebody wants to raise the debt ceiling more, show me where you want to save more. Meanwhile, House Democrats are filing a petition to force a vote on a clean debt ceiling with no strings attached. But the petition can't pass without some Republicans signing off. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill.
to the and on the Senate side, the Democratic and Republican chairs of the Senate Appropriations Committee announced they'll begin hearings in June to work on a new budget. There is still no clear answer into the origins of, origins of COVID-19, but a Republican-led investigation has unearthed additional evidence supporting the theory that the virus likely escaped from a lab in Wuhan, China. Senator Marco Rubio's office released a report on the investigation today. It highlights evidence that Chinese government officials had some level of awareness of an outbreak of infectious disease well before it was disclosed to the public in December of 2019. It also notes the likelihood that there was a biocontainment failure or accident at the state-run Wuhan Institute of Virology. A dramatic shift in abortion laws affecting millions of women after Republican lawmakers in North Carolina overruled the governor's veto, establishing a 12-week limit on abortions. The new law goes into effect July 1st. Under the measure, most abortions will be banned after 12 weeks of pregnancy. Just three days earlier, North Carolina's Democratic governor, Roy Cooper, rejected the bill, but his power is limited. Last month, a Democratic state representative from the liberal-leaning Charlotte area switched parties just five months after the elections. The change gave Republicans a supermajority and the power to override vetoes from the governor. The White House protested late Tuesday night saying, quote, women have been left with no choice but to travel hundreds of miles for the care they need. Meanwhile, an appeals court in New Orleans is hearing an abortion pill case today. The three-panel judge will weigh in on the safety of the drug Mifepristone, which was approved by the federal government more than two decades ago. Anti-abortion activists are asking the courts to pull the drug off the market nationwide, including in states where the procedure remains legal. A missing girl featured on the Netflix reboot of Unsolved Mysteries is back home with her father after six years apart. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children says someone spotted Kayla Unbohown in Asheville, North Carolina. Kayla's non-custodial mother, Heather Unbohown, is charged with abducting her from the Chicago area when she was nine years old. Bond is set at $250,000 and the 40-year-old faces extradition to Illinois. There's more to come on News Street Now at noon, why Jeep Cherokee owners are being asked to park their vehicles outdoors. Plus, Taco Bell files a petition to be able to use the phrase Taco Tuesday. That's next in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at noon. Flex Steel is furniture that comforts, furniture for living, furniture with a heart of steel. Save big during our Flex Steel authorized sale going on now at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Mad City, a division of Renuity, the local service you deserve, now backed by unmatched national strength. We are Wisconsin's number one ranked remodeler. We started with 50. Now we're looking for 30 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. Receive special savings on a beautiful new cabinet refacing project. In addition to our lifetime warranty, Mad City offers a price lock guarantee. Once you receive a free design consultation, we'll lock your price in and guarantee it for one year. And act now, be one of 30 homeowners who receive free installation on a cabinet refacing project with no interest and no payments till 2025. Senior and military discounts. Plus, call during this program for a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call now with zip code and location to qualify. 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. Celebrate Memorial Day at Brothers Main, where unbeatable appliance deals come with expert advice. Enjoy special prices and free delivery on top brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid. Visit us today and feel like family at Brothers Main. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. 
No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833-WIS-VRAP. That's 833-947-8727. Flex Steel is furniture that comforts. Furniture for living. Furniture with a heart of steel. Save big during our Flex Steel authorized sale. Going on now at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Today, President Biden goes to Japan for a three-day meeting of a group of the world's seven richest nations known as the G7. While there, leaders are expected to discuss China and the war in Ukraine, along with other topics, the president will be cutting his trip short to come back to the U.S. and continue working towards a deal on the debt ceiling. The owners of thousands of Jeep Cherokees are being warned to park outdoors because of a potential fire hazard, even with the engine turned off. The manufacturer warns water that gets into the power lift gate can spark an electrical fire. The recall involves the model years 2014 through 2016. And Taco Bell wants to make the phrase Taco Tuesday available for all to use freely. The fast food chain has filed a petition with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office asking it to cancel the trademark that's currently owned by Wyoming-based rival Taco John's. Taco Bell also filed a second petition against the parent company of Gregory's Restaurant and Bar, who owns the rights to the phrase in New Jersey. In 2019, the U.S. Patent Office denied an attempt by NBA star LeBron James to trademark the phrase, arguing it's commonly used in everyday speech. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 323 points. The Nasdaq up almost 100 points. And the S&P 500 up 24. Our call for action volunteers are in the building taking your consumer complaints and taking action on your behalf. Volunteers are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so you can call for action right now at 608-270-2833 or submit a claim anytime at channel3000.com slash call for action. Pam has today's egg prices next, along with Greg's latest forecast. And then today on Live at 4, the face of State Street has certainly changed over the years. We'll meet a local author with first-hand knowledge. Her book is called The Magic Hour, a very personal history of State Street. I was mad, and I wanted to slam something, and I tried slamming the door, and I couldn't. I wouldn't slam. I was like, darn it! We got the soft clothes! <laughs> With soft clothes, doors and drawers, your kitchen cabinets won't be so easily damaged by daily wear and tear. It's just one of the reasons homeowners love Mad City Kitchens. And now we're looking for 30 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. Choose new cabinet colors and countertops, pull out shelves, lazy Susans, even a new kitchen sink installed in as little as two days. The first 30 homeowners who call now will save with free installation with no interest and no payments till 2025. Senior and military discounts. Plus, call during this program for a free $50 Amazon gift card with estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call now with zip code and location to qualify. 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. DePaco Credit Union empowers your well-being, helps you reach your goals, because when our members love life, it makes a brighter community for all. DePaco can help you be well. It's Steinhoffel's Memorial Day Sale. And right now, save up to $500 on adjustable base sets, plus get $300 in Steinhoffel's cash. Tempur-Pedic Queen mattresses start at just $42 per month when you use Steinhoffel's 72-month financing. Tempur-Pedic mattresses are designed to make aches and pains a thing of the past by relieving pressure points and supporting the body as no other mattress can. Shop in-store or online at steinhoffels.com. 
Madison's Henry Vilas Zoo has been at the center of controversy for years. After a formal review seemed to put the zoo in the clear, News 3 Now is uncovering new allegations. There's these things happening that shouldn't be happening at a zoo that is AZA accredited. Braden Ross talks with a former employee who makes some eye-opening claims about the zoo's animal care practices. I want what is shown to the public to be what's actually happening. News 3 Now investigates Thursday at 6. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Let's check in, with, check in with Pam Yankee now from the Midwest Farm Report on this Wednesday afternoon. How are yep. you? Middle of the week. I'm doing all right. So long as this weather stays the way it is, we're doing all right for sure. You know, there's still a lot of activity, a flurry of activity that's happening down at the state capitol. And we do kind of need to keep a pulse on things for Wisconsin agriculture. I was talking about it with Senator Joan Balwig. One area that... Uh, we are hoping is going to get addressed and passed is farmland preservation in Wisconsin. I don't know if you realized it or not, but they're estimating that we lost about a million acres of farmland between 2010 and 2021. So Senator Patrick Teston from Stevens Point, Representative Lauren Oldenburg from Viroqua, wanted to make some adjustments to the state's farmland preservation program. Uh, Senator Joan Bolwig from Marquezan told me yesterday that everybody seemed to be looking favorably at these adjustments, which basically uh, would shorten the time that farm and landowners have to uh, commit to the program and they'd also try to increase the size of the tax credits offered. So they've had it in place since 1977, but as you can imagine, with the way that land values have changed and the competition for land out there, especially around metropolitan areas, uh, trying to get farmers to commit or landowners to commit, that's, uh, that's a big feat. So they want to try to make it look as attractive as they can. Tomorrow they are going to be taking a look at uh, funding for the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection hoping that they get a few more pennies in their pocket. And congratulations to the eight Wisconsin meat processors that got their grants through the state's meat processor infrastructure grant program. The only part that ever... Uh, is a little upsetting is they actually had 70 applicants that asked for more than $2.8 million in grants, but they only had $200,000 to spread out, so only eight of the meat processors were uh, granted. Barrel cheese today in Chicago up three quarters of a cent at 145 and a half. 40 pound block cheese up three and a half at 154. The double A butter on Wednesday, two and a quarter cents higher at 246 per pound. That dairy complex is definitely something that a lot of folks in Wisconsin are talking about. We've seen it erode pretty quickly. I'm hearing, uh, as I mentioned to you yesterday, uh, kids uh, exiting, the schools uh, going off on summer recess as part of it. But we just got plenty of milk out there, even California rebounding after all that crazy weather that they, that they had. So we might be in for a little bit of a stretch here, Mark, where our dairy farmers are under some financial stress until at least fourth quarter. All right, let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. Yep. Thank you, Pam. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, nearly 19 million Americans live in food deserts, not close to a supermarket or a big box store with food. As CBS's Jared Hill reports, some communities hope a growing food forest trend can help fill the need. Starting to grow? It's not much yet. This big shrub is elderberry? But in Newark, the biggest city in New Jersey, a small forest is just starting to grow. A food forest is like a garden, but it's designed to try to mimic a natural ecosystem like a forest. The food forest at the New Jersey Institute of Technology is part of a global trend. Cities working to cultivate fruits and vegetables native to a particular region. It's hard to go more than probably 10 steps and not see some kind of food happening. Jay Olubayawu is the urban agriculture director for the city of Atlanta, home to what's considered the largest free public food forest in the country. The goal is for people to be able to come, you know, receive some level of nourishment, whether that's through food and or through programming and education and experience. Even with more food forests like this sprouting across the country, a big question is how long before they become a reliable resource for people struggling to access or afford fresh fruits and vegetables. This is one part of a problem that will require a lot of different kinds of solutions. Atlanta is working to expand its program to include community gardens and farmers markets. We want to make sure more and more people are fed. We have a city goal of 85% of residents being located within a half a mile of fresh affordable food. He's hoping now that the seed is planted, the idea will grow in cities nationwide. Jared Hill, CBS News, Newark, New Jersey.
And they also hope these inspire people to plant local fruits and veggies in their own yards. Experts also talk about how these can be beneficial for local wildlife, providing food and poll for pollinators like bees and butterflies. Goodbye, Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Hello, Frank Mobile. The beloved Wienermobile is hitting the road this summer with a new name. The change is in honor of the brand's 100% Beef Frank's new recipe. The fleet of six Frank Mobiles feature new exterior details, including the phrase, please do not lick. Instead of hot doggers behind the wheel, the new drivers are called Frank Footers. Oscar Mayer says this is the first time the vehicle has changed names since 1936. I don't like it. Got to have the Wienermobile. Yeah, I, I don't like that either. Keep the name. Yep. It's just, it's too <laughs> well. I just cannot. I'm not going to be saying that. But anyway, uh, we look at the past few temperatures uh, for the past couple weeks. We've kind of been up and down, up and down, kind of a standard what you would expect in May. You get up to the 80s, back to the 60s with these fronts. And then for the past uh, week, two, we've kind of seen that same trend. Like I said, all the way to the 11th to back down to there. So we're going to see that probably for another few days until we actually get more into steady, more mild summer-like temperatures probably to next week. So in the meantime, we still got the smoky skies through tomorrow with all the smoke that will be coming through. We have shower and thunderstorm chance coming mainly tomorrow night. Could be tomorrow evening. There's showers lingering on Friday and then looks to be a dry weekend. And right now, dry through at least next Thursday with potential for some warmer temperatures next week, too, if the pattern holds true. For the temperatures, like I said, back and forth with 60s and 70s. 60s today, 70s tomorrow, then back to 60s. Kind of that uh, back and forth until at least Saturday. Overnight low is still quite chilly. We'll still be in the 40s, even low 40s occasionally, so something to keep in mind of. But 70s to 80s next week. There is some signs we might approach 90 if things pan out just right. For the meantime, we still got that northeast flow here today. That's why our temperatures are a little bit chillier than we were yesterday. Warmer conditions up to to the 70s of southwest Wisconsin, mid 60s and south central. But as you go towards the lake, it's struggling to get to 60 today. As we go through this evening, the winds will start turning back around to the southeast as we have a system approaching tomorrow. That'll keep the overnight lows a little bit warmer, not too much as we work our way into over after midnight into the 50s. And then by the morning hours, we should be back into the 40s for most locations. Cooler as you go further east of Madison, where the winds won't be quite that southeasterly. As we go into tomorrow, we're really going to start seeing those southerly winds increase because we have that front that is going to be coming towards the afternoon. Smoky skies still continuing. Um, as we see by the time we get to noon, we're going to see in the mid 70s. There's that rain that's beginning to approach. By the time we get to the afternoon hours, we'll be approaching the mid 70s, maybe a few 80s out there. It'll take some time for this front to get here as it is fairly dry. So some of this precipitation may not reach the ground until we get more towards the evening. But you can see by 8 p.m., 7 p.m., you see kind of a line of showers with a few embedded thunderstorms pushing across the area. Madison between 9 and then it kind of lingers and then stalls out kind of overnight. So really after midnight, we might see just a line of showers, light rain with occasional thunder. But I think the thunder chance really will diminish by the time we get towards midnight. As you wake up for Friday morning, I think it might be a wet commute for at least Madison eastward. Further west, you'll probably not see. You'll see breaks in the clouds, but you see a few more showers will linger through Friday. That'll keep the conditions a little bit cooler. Big picture shows will be on that wraparound through Friday. That'll keep at least cloud cover in between and temperatures in the 60s. But notice up to the north, not much to speak of, at least for Saturday. High pressure is going to be sliding south. So we should have good conditions as we go until Saturday. That one well to Canada, that's the thing that we're tracking for Sunday. But in the meantime, Saturday should be actually really nice with temperatures around 70 degrees. And that shows up in the 10 day. Once we get past Saturday, then Sunday still looks like a good weekend. No significant changes going there. We might have a little bit of a front come through Monday. That looks dry right now, might just reduce the temperature a little bit. And then we have a warming trend next week, which there's like said, some indications we could even be warmer than that if everything pans out right. But for right now, we should at least be back into the 80s the middle of next week with maybe some shower thunderstorm chance towards the tail end. We could use some rain, that's for sure. It's going to be a dry stretch, especially up north. Like I said, they have uh, fire issues going on right there, and it's only going to get worse because we're not really going to see much precipitation here for the next several days. All right. Thank you, Greg. There's more to come on News for Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, I'm taking a trip down memory lane with a dessert that my neighbor made for me when I was a kid. It's an oldie or goodie. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Mad City has more than 50,000 satisfied customers. An A-plus rating with the BBB. 
And with our price lock guarantee, schedule your kitchen cabinet refacing quote now and we'll lock the price in for one year guaranteed. Mad City Kitchens is your trusted source for cabinet refacing. Avoid the lengthy remodel, stay under budget, and transform your kitchen in as little as two days. Plus, time's running out to call. We're looking for 30 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. 30 homeowners who call now will receive free installation on a cabinet refacing project with no interest and no payments till 2025. Senior and military discounts. Plus, last chance to call during this program and receive a free $50 Amazon gift card with estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call now with zip code and location to qualify. 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I have experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. After long hours working on my feet, I dreaded shopping, climbing stairs, even walking my dog. Then I discovered good feet support could reduce the stress to my feet, knees, and back. Now I can stand for work, I can climb those stairs, I can shop till I drop, and still have energy for the most important walk of the day. And somebody I love is very happy about that. I'm Rachel, and this is my Good Feet story. Come into a Good Feet store. Thanks to the Good Feet store. Today, I want to share a recipe that my neighbor, Mrs. D, used to make every summer when I was growing up. It wasn't fancy. As a matter of fact, it was pretty simple, which is what made it so good. It's been years since I last had it, and Mrs. D is no longer with us. So here's my rendition of it based on lots of good memories. To make the crust, we combine some finely crushed sugar cookies with melted butter. This gets pressed into a 9 by 13 pan and gets baked off. Next, we beat together some heavy cream with granulated sugar until it forms stiff peaks. Now to that, we add some cream cheese and whip it up until it's nice and fluffy. At this point, grab a rubber spatula and fold in lots of sliced fresh strawberries. All of this goodness now goes on top of our cooled crust and into the fridge it goes to firm up. I can still remember how she topped each piece with extra berries. To get the cool and refreshing recipe for Mrs. D's Icebox Strawberry Shortcake Bars, all you have to do is stop by our website. I bet this would be perfect for any Memorial Day get-together. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a very easy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Mrs. D. All right, here's Greg One final check of the forecast. Yeah, we'll still with the deal with the smoky sky, so it should be another good sunset to check out with that smoke. You can see pretty much widespread across the area. It's kind of rotating back around, so we won't see much improve with that. There's your temperatures for tomorrow. Much warmer, but we do have showers and thunderstorm chances coming tomorrow night and to Friday. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4.